In June 2022, I ordered my Lotus Amira and was provided what turned out to be a very optimistic delivery date of November 2022. Since that day, many people have asked me, why the Lotus Amira? Why didn't I choose one of the other sports cars that was available around that time? So why did I choose the Lotus Amira? What other sports cars did I consider before finalising on the Lotus Amira? So prior to finalising on a Lotus Amira, I did evaluate quite a few other sports cars around the time. Now, I won't go into all those sports cars because there's quite a few, but I'll just go into the last few that I finalised on, which were the, the, the last in, the, in, in my criteria before finalising on a Lotus Amira. And also for further details of my Lotus Amira journey, I'll pop a link to the Lotus Amira playlist in the description below. So there was three other cars that I finalised on that were really in my top, my top three uh, before finalising on a Lotus Amira. And those cars were 718 Boxster, 718 Cayman GT4, and the Porsche 991.1 GT3. Now, the Porsche 991 GT3 is quite a bit outside that criteria financially, but we'll get to that in a minute. So why didn't I choose a 718 Boxster? So 718 Boxster was around 58,000 base spec. Now, by the time you've got that on the road, it's around 60,000. And by the time it's spec'd up to what, be, what would be probably my options list and my specification for the car, it'd be around 75,000. So you're getting into that ballpark of the Lotus Amira. Remember the Lotus Amira back then was my Lotus Amira for on the road with my specification for the first edition was 82,000. So this is getting around 75,000, 76, 77,000. It's actually cheaper than the Lotus Amira. And of course now the Lotus Mira is 85,995 base spec for the 3.5 V6, which was the option that I chose. So it's escalated and increased quite a bit in price now. So way, way back in 2001, I specified a brand new 986 Boxster S. It took about a year for, the, for that car to come because they had a year wait list and it was specified in cobalt metallic blue, which was an option back then. Uh, Metropole blue interior, all the silver aluminium packs, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, sports classic wheels. Um, I can't remember specifically how much that was, but it was around nine to 10,000 pounds of options, which back in 2001 was very expensive for a Boxster S um, for the amount of options that you could put on it. And I loved the car, very well balanced, and I did 11,000 miles on it before I sold it after its first year. And because there was a year waiting list, it was a good time to sell it. So in effect, I sold it for more than the base price of a Boxster S at the time. Now, so why wouldn't I buy a new box dress now? Well, even though I love that car, I've done it and, and I wanted something different. So I've, I've already owned a Boxster, I've, even though 718 Boxster is obviously a far substantial increase and, and increment above the 986 Boxster, which is the one that I had in 2001, I still wanted something different. So in my mind that eliminated the 718 Boxster. One of the other options that I considered was a Porsche 991.1 GT3. Now, yes, a Porsche 991 GT3 back then, the 991.1 GT3 was around 110,000 to 115,000 for a good edition, for a good version of the 991.1 GT3. Now, I reviewed one of those earlier in this year. And when I reviewed it earlier this year, it made me even more want one of those, one of those GT3s because they're just a fantastic car, very underrated in my opinion and very undervalued. And the prices have dropped even more now due to our financial climate. So why didn't I go for a 991.1 GT3? Well, price really, 110,000 is a lot more than 82,000. It's substantial increase. And I just couldn't push to that at the time. It would have been a great situation to own a 991.1 GT3. And I'm still really keen on owning a 991.1 GT3. In fact, now that the prices have dropped down, you can get a good 991.1 GT3 for around 85, 90,000. So they've dropped about 10, 15, 20 grand in this financial downturn that we're on at the moment. So that is a viable option for the future to have a 991.1 GT3. Now, the key thing about owning a 991.1 GT3, of course, the engine failure issues. I'll drop a link in the description below to the 991.1 GT3 review video that we provided for our channel. In that video, I went into great detail about the failure issues that occurred um, from the E0 series engines all the way through to the F and G, etc., and, and the best version of the engine to have, I believe, is the G6 engine, which was pretty much the last 991.1 GT3 engine that was provided. Um, and that same engine, I believe, was then used for the 991.2 GT3. Although, of course, that engine type was then uplifted to a 4 litre, where it's a 3.8 litre in the 991.1. But anyway, I digress. So really, it was cost. And 
it was a different type of sports car as well. The, the GT3, although it isn't classed as a supercar, it pretty much is a supercar really. You take one of those out around mountain passes and you get to realize it pretty much is a supercar. It keeps up with all proper Ferrari and Lamborghini supercars, no issues whatsoever. This is a very special sports car. So that was definitely a viable option, but too expensive. And it just wasn't the right time really for me to, to own a GT3. Now the last sports car in my top three that I considered outside of course, including the Lotus Amira, is the one that you've been screaming at the screen for, I'm sure. Yes, the Porsche Cayman, the 718 GT4. So why not the GT4? Now, there's an interesting story there. I did actually try and get a Porsche 992 GT3 build slot. Um, it was, there was an option of it at the time, and this is going back last year, late last year. There was a, a possible option, a possible viability of me getting the Porsche 992 GT3 build slot. I pushed for this quite hard. I was hoping that that was gonna come about, but it just didn't. I mean, they're like rocking horse bloody shit they are trying to get a, everybody knows this, you know, trying to get a new GT3 build slot is just hell. Even in a financial downturn, it's hell. So in back, back in that day, when things were a lot more buoyant then the market was a lot more buoyant, it was just hell trying to get a, a GT3 build slot. But I did try. And there was at the time a possible opportunity there to get a GT3 build slot, but it never came about. But they did come back to me and offer me a Porsche Cayman GT4 build slot, a 718 GT4 build slot. But at the time, the Cayman just didn't have that cachet of the Lotus Amira. Remember, the Lotus Amira was going to be the last ever non-electrified, non-hybrid sports car that Lotus were ever going to build, and which is still the case, I believe. And, it, and the Cayman just didn't have that cachet of that car. Of course, you had the differences there where the Lotus Amira was supercharged and the GT4 was naturally aspirated. So, of course, that put it up higher in the in the criteria as well for me um, as a viable option against all the other cars I'd already dismissed outside of this top three. But really it was the looks and the beguilement of the Lotus Amira that really made me decide on the Lotus Amira. So I'd excluded all those options. I'd excluded a 718 Boxster, a 991.1 GT3 and a 718 Cayman GT4. So why did I choose the Lotus Amira? What beguiled me? What was a really attachment that I had to the Lotus Amira? So as I've alluded to earlier, I was beguiled by the Lotus Amira, the cachet of the last ever non-electric, non-hybrid Lotus sports car. That cachet and that beguilement just brought me in, as it did a lot of other people. I mean, you know, they, they had their order books. In, they were engulfed with orders. I wanted the last proper non-electric, non-hybrid Lotus sports car that was ever gonna be made. And it looked fantastic. Just look at the Lotus Amira, it looks absolutely phenomenal. It has those, it has those supercar looks. And the color spec that they provided, although it was limited in the first edition, it was great. And at the time, it seemed a great viable option financially, because even though they said that the base entry level price for the Lotus Amira was gonna be under 65,000, that specification of car has yet to be delivered on. More on that in my, pre in my previous um, Amira video, link in the description below. So when I ordered my Lotus Amira, the base spec for the first edition V6 was 75,995. Now that was previous to options and pre on the road costs. So mine ended up being 82,000. Now the Porsche GT4 Cayman was around 80,000. So again, it was a financially viable option. But again, the beguilement of the Lotus Amira pulled me away from the Cayman and towards the Lotus Amira because of it being the last non-electric, non-hybrid sports car that Lotus were ever going to be delivering. If you enjoyed the video, please make sure you give it a thumbs up, give it a like, very important for the channel. Now back to the video. So why did I choose the Lotus Amira? When we got to Goodwood in 2022, actually seeing the Lotus Amira in the flesh and hearing it, I mean, that was another level of beguilement as well. Seeing the actual Lotus Amira, you can think, well, you know, relative to, to sports cars and supercars, even though it isn't a supercar, relative to sports cars of, of this era, it's quite slim and quite compact. So you're sitting in the car, you've got a, a fairly good driving position. A, you know, there is that issue with regards to the, the steering wheel. There's, there's a, the steering wheel is shaped in a sort of arc. Um, there's an arc gap in the top of the steering wheel that provides you access to see the instrument cluster. But unless you've got the steering wheel at a, at a perfect angle, you can't see that instrument cluster as accurately as probably you should, but it still was pretty cool. There's the negative as well, that the steering wheel was a bit too thick, et cetera, et cetera. So there were some negatives as, as I talked about in some of my previous videos. 
but it was a cool car to be in. And walking around the car at Goodwood and being sat in the car at Goodwood, having the feel um, of the of the tactility of the textures and the and the products and the lever and the lever interior and the Alcantara that's used in t in, on the inside of the car and the switch gear the quality of the switch gear etc. Again, although it was not high quality as Porsche, it was still exceptional improvement over the Lot over the previous Lotuses that had been released. So that again was an extra level beguilement, an extra thought process. Well, yeah, this is the right car. So you had the situation where the car looked bloody awesome. You had the situation where it was the last non-electric, non-hybrid sports car that Lotus were ever going to build. And you had the situation where um, the marketing process of Lotus was very good and it really beguiled you into, with the other criteria, it really beguiled you into wanting the car. And when it was released at Goodwood, it looked fantastic. Um, and everybody, the, the stand was very, very busy. It was very hard to gain access to the car, which of course is a good sign because everybody's putting their orders in. Um, so everybody's buying into that as well. So you're not the only person. You don't feel like you're you're on your own buying that car. Everybody was ordering a Lotus Amira, it seemed. So it was the car of the time to purchase. It was the car of the time to put your name down to order. In addition, the Lotus Amira had that really cool power plant, that non-hybrid, non-electric, supercharged, 3.5 litre V6 pushing out 400 brake horsepower. That was another big beguilement as well. When you saw the initial content being pushed out by the reviewers, by the journalists, you could hear the sound of that engine and it sounded really cool, very mechanical, especially with the supercharger. And when I test drove the car, it just enamored me even more to the car, the drivability of the car. It felt very well balanced. Yes, it felt a little bit underpowered. Maybe it could have done with about 100 brake horsepower more um, because, of course, it was a lot heavier than the Exige the Elise. But you couldn't have that build quality without having the additional weight because the build quality was far superior over the Lotus, Lotus Elise and Lotus Exige, the previous Lotuses that had come before. Then there's another criteria as well, which was one of the biggest options that leveraged it against choosing the 718 Boxster, the 718 GT4 and the 991.1 GT3. And that was YouTube. We really wanted to bring that car early to you to create a lot of content on it for our viewers. So we were gonna, we were gonna have the car for around nine to 12 months, we're gonna create a lot of content on it. We we're gonna create all content around all the situations that could, that could possibly occur or, or that had occurred during my ownership. Obviously the getting used to the car, driving of the car, and we were gonna be creating content in the car to bring you all the issues that were occurring with the car, all the positives, all the negatives, uh, all the pros and cons, etc., of having that car and any foibles, any callbacks that they were on the car and how to deal with those callbacks and what those callbacks were, etc., etc., etc. So one of the biggest motivations for buying a car along all the other items that I've already discussed was it being a YouTube car. Now, this is absolutely essential with it being a YouTube car for us. It was absolutely essential for us getting an early car. And of course, it got delayed, delayed, delayed. And then that just went out of all possibility then with it being delayed from November 2022 to perceivably March, April, or maybe even later in 2023. All that early content possibility just all went down the drain. It just didn't become a possibility. Um, but that's more in why we cancelled, not so much in why I chose a Lotus Amira. That was just a byproduct of it at the end. So there you have it, guys. The 718 Boxster, the 718 GT4 and the 991.1 GT3. Those were the top three that I was considering before I finalised on my Lotus Amira. And of course, as I've discussed in the previous video that I created, um, which is on my Lotus Amira playlist, link in the description below, those cars are now good possible viable options for daily drivers and most probably the 991.1 GT3 is of the highest of those of, on that list for a possible daily driver. The price for a base spec first edition Lotus Amira is now 85995 so on the road all in is going to be around 87000 so you can see there a 991.1 GT3 being around 85 to 90000 you're talking about the difference in a, in two to five thousand pounds it's a no-brainer I'd go for the 991.1 GT3 every day. So when you start looking at how the prices have changed in the Lotus Amira and how the financial decline has changed the market, it just brings in more viable options. But again, that's why I cancelled the Lotus Amira. It's such a shame because the Lotus Amira had such promise, but in my opinion, Lotus just didn't deliver on that promise. So there you have it, guys. That's why I finalised on ordering a Lotus Amira. Thanks a lot for watching, guys, and... We'll see you in the next video.